this one right here is just a tad uh, too big. <laughs> my fellow soulmates and food lovers and welcome to another episode of Eileen's Kitchen Stories. In this month I'm going to present to you Austria, which is a neighboring country of Germany. So if you ever have been in the Alps, in the region of the Alps, you might find similarities in the cuisine. Today I'm going to show you something that is absolutely typical for Vienna. It's the Wiener Schnitzel, the Viennese Schnitzel. And it's so typical because it is protected. If it's not made from veal, but made from pork, then it's not a Wiener Schnitzel. Check out the ingredients and then I'm going to start cooking with you in a second. So guys, the recipe that I'm going to show you today is actually from 1831, so quite a while back. And in that recipe, you had the Wiener Schnitzel topped with some anchovies butter. So we're going to start off making the anchovies butter. The regular anchovies butter was only made with butter and anchovies. So today I'm going to show you a different version because I think just anchovies and butter is quite plain. We're going to add some capers, some shallots and a little bit of lemon zest. Okay guys, so in here you can find two anchovies fillets that I've already chopped up very finely and that I kind of made into a paste with a knife. And into this I'm going to add my butter, the finely sliced shallot and some finely chopped up capers. This is about two teaspoons. And the butter needs to be at room temperature. This is very important, otherwise it's going to be very hard to actually mix the butter. Mmm, very nice flavor. Just a tad fishy, but not as much. The anchovies actually give it a quite good taste. And now I'm going to add a little bit of salt. And now we can pop this into the fridge until we need it. We're going to sprinkle it hot onto the Wiener Schnitzel later on, but you can also serve it cold to different types of meat. Okay guys, on to the breadcrumbs. Perfect little breadcrumbs. Um, yes, I was slightly cheating because actually <laughs> the bread that I bought was from yesterday, so it was super fresh and a little bit sticky still. So, just a tip from my side, really get the bread two or three days before you actually make the Wiener Schnitzel. Onto the Schnitzel itself. This piece of Schnitzel right here is actually perfect, as you can see. It should be about a handful and about one finger thick. So that's really, really perfect measurement in that one. This one right here is just a tad uh, too big. <laughs> we need to flatten out our lovely veal Schnitzel. I'm going to take some transparent foil and put them onto the foil and then put some foil on top. If you have something like this at home, never, never use something like this because you're going to destroy the meat. We don't want to have the meat destroyed, we just want to flatten it out. What I'm going to take is a pan. This is an iron pan so it's really really heavy. Also we're going to pound this very lightly guys. We don't want to damage the meat because it's already tender. It's not pork guys. On it goes. So as you can see right here I already cracked up the eggs. This is what we're going to need later on in order to cover the meat and then later on it in the breadcrumbs. But the most important thing now is we need to heat up our clarified butter in which we're going to fry our lovely veal schnitzel. So let's take a good dollop of it and heat it up. It should have a temperature of about 160 to 170 degrees in order to pop it in and let it fry beautifully. And by the way, if you thought that the Wiener Schnitzel comes from Italy, then you might not be right. In Austria, people have been frying and breading things for so many years. There is one story that was actually proven wrong which was that the field marshal, who was actually in Italy, he was eating a cotoletta alla milanese, so like a Milanese veal steak. He was eating that every day in Italy. So people thought he brought it back to the country of Austria in order to eat it there every day because he was so used to it and he loved it so much. It was just kind of a marketing campaign for the Wiener Schnitzel. Now that the clarified butter has the proper temperature, everything needs to be rather quick. Pop some proper salt onto our meat. 
dunk it straight into the egg and then cover it with breadcrumbs. Please do not press the breadcrumbs into the meat, otherwise it's going to be not as we want it to be. And then in it goes. The main difference actually between the old recipe and the stuff that we are doing today nowadays is that we didn't put some flour onto the veal before breading it. That is the old traditional way and I'm just going to try how this actually works out. The other ones later on I'm definitely going to uh, bread in some flour as well. So. Okay now the second one I've already salted and I put it into some flour now. Let's see what the difference is. And into our fat. Okay guys, now that all three of them are ready, we can actually prepare the lovely plate. On here I have some lovely potato salad, which was typical Austrian. Then next to it, our Wiener Schnitzel. The first way to present it is with our anchovies butter. That's the very typical version from the 1900s. And the second one is Wiener Garnitur, which is just a proper lemon slice and some anchovies on top and some capers. And then the typical way with a little bit of lemon that you can squeeze on top of your Wiener Schnitzel. It's so tender, guys, oh my God. Don't let the anchovies actually in the anchovies butter put you off. It is actually not as strong as I would have thought in the butters. And also the potato salad, I think goes so well with it. So guys, I hope you're gonna make these at home. Let me know in the comments below how they went. And also let me know whether you have been maybe to Vienna and tried a typical Wiener Schnitzel. What's the best way to eat it for you? Do you like to have it with some lemon on top, with some Wiener Garnitur, or maybe that one, the traditional way? It would be amazing to see you next time, which is possible if you subscribe to my channel. It is for free and then you will not miss out on any future videos. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it as well and then I'm looking forward to seeing you next time, guys. Bye!